How Our Planet Was Formed It has long been known that the planet Earth appeared about 4.5 billion years ago. Back then, it was not at all what we know it as now. And in order to become a populated world covered with mountains, forests, and oceans, she had to go a long way. And perhaps, under other circumstances that arose during the evolution of the planet, it could completely have looked different. How did it happen that our world became like this? Our channel describes in detail many eras of the Earth's existence and almost all stages of the emergence and development of life in the seas and on land. But today, we will begin a story about those times when Earth and indeed the entire solar system was just emerging. By subscribing to the Age of Dinosaurs channel, our viewers will be the first to know about the appearance of new videos about the development of the planet. We also encourage you to leave your comments under the video and mark your favorite videos with likes. Five billion years ago, on the site of our planet, there was a huge cloud consisting of gases, dust, ice, and other substances. This cloud was in constant rotation and gradually a denser region formed in its center. The acceleration of this process was influenced by the activity of the already born and gaining strength of the Sun. After the mass of the future planetary core became sufficient to attract the rest of the particles, the formation of a new planet became a matter of time. Most likely, several dozen similar celestial bodies formed simultaneously in the solar system. In the course of their movement, they collided and united. Also, many of these planets chipped off pieces from others or destroyed them completely. It is no secret that one of these earthly fragments is the Moon. The planet itself, for many millions of years, was a continuous ocean of molten rock. Its atmosphere was dominated by carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and sulfur. Water could be present on Earth at that time only in the form of steam. All this was accompanied by the constant rotation of the planet as in a centrifuge or a washing machine drum. And gradually, heavier elements like molten iron and nickel gathered in the center of the ball. Thus, the core of our planet was formed and now it is a molten mixture of iron-nickel ores. But there is another theory of the origin of the heavier core and the formation of the outer layers from various silicate deposits. Some scientists believe that the principle of the centrifuge does not fully explain the process of formation of the nucleus. They claim that a large amount of the metals in the modern planetary core were formed due to the fall of meteorites consisting of these rocks. But then, the meteorites had to fall in a strictly defined order, first metal, then the lighter ones. It is still impossible to fully understand the veracity of both hypotheses. Modern scientific methods for analyzing the Earth's crust make it possible to study rocks lying at a certain depth from the surface. These rocks are about 3.7 billion years old. The layers of the Earth's crust that were formed earlier still remain unexplored. Conclusions about their origin and composition are mostly based on theory. Without a doubt, the Earth's core has a gigantic mass Otherwise, its attractive force would not be enough to keep water and atmosphere close to the surface of the planet. It is also safe to say that the inner part of the planet has good electrical conductivity. A conductor rotating in a magnetic field is capable of creating its own electromagnetic field. Thanks to this field, the Earth is protected from solar radiation. Now, the core of the planet has the following structure. The inner core, located at a depth of about 6,370 kilometers from the surface. It has a high density and has a high temperature. 80% of the interior of the core is iron. The rest is silicon dioxide. It is believed that due to the enormous pressure inside the core, even light gases such as hydrogen remain there in a solid state. The outer shell of the core is located at a depth of 2,900 to 5,100 kilometers. 
This part of the core is made up of molten iron and nickel. It is the gigantic conductor that creates the electromagnetic field of the planet. On top of the core is the mantle. It makes up almost 70% of the entire mass of the planet. In the higher layers, it is fluid and mobile. At the bottom, the mantle has a solid structure. The Earth's crust is the hard shell of the planet. Under the ocean floor, its thickness can be only a few kilometers. On land, it is tens of kilometers of solid rock. It consists of three layers, sedimentary rocks on the surface itself, a layer of granite just below, and even lower, basalt. At the dawn of the formation of Earth's crust, it was only a thin layer of molten basalt. In parallel, there were processes of development of the solar system and other planets. During this formation, the Earth's surface was subjected to constant meteorite bombardment for tens of millions of years. It is believed that most of the Earth's oceans were formed from melted ice brought by these meteorites from about 3.9 billion years ago. Already after a hundred million years, the entire surface of the Earth was covered with water. This single ocean was quite shallow and saltier than it is now. At the same time, the constant fall of meteorites continues and a huge number of volcanoes violently erupt. The lava cooling in the water gradually forms the first islands, and with meteorite minerals, the simple proteins and amino acids get to the earth. Subsequently, these substances will give rise to the first single-celled life. 3.5 billion years ago, clusters of cyanobacteria could be observed on the surface of the world's oceans. Their remains look like stone mats and are called stromatolites. These bacteria feed on photosynthesis, the byproduct of which is oxygen. It was thanks to the gradual saturation of water and the atmosphere with this gas that the further development of life on this planet became possible. Over the next two billion years, the life of the planet has not changed much. The duration of the day at the time was about 16 hours. The Earth's core remained hotter than the surface of the sun. Volcanic activity did not stop, and living beings had not yet evolved to more complex forms. But due to constant eruptions, the Earth's crust began to crack and divide into lithospheric plates. These plates began their unhurried movement, uniting the islands into larger formations and again separating. It is believed that before, there were already several so-called supercontinents that united all land areas together. Some scientists argue that there are at least six such supercontinents in the entire history of the planet. It is believed that in the period from 3.6 to 2.8 billion years ago, there was the first of them. Val Bara. It consisted of the two oldest cratons on the planet, Cap Val and Pil Bara. Now, these parts of the Earth's crust are small parts of Africa and Australia. The supercontinent they made up was about six times smaller than present-day Australia. Another unconfirmed ancient supercontinent was Ur. It formed about three billion years ago. At first, it included two cratons, which now lie at the base of India and Antarctica. About 2.5 billion years ago, they were joined by the Zimbabwe and Yilgarn cratons. Now, they are parts of Africa and Australia. And in the period from 1.5 to 1 billion years ago, two more continents joined Ur, Nina and the Atlantic. Together, they formed the supercontinent Rodinia. The appearance of this landmass, huge by the standards of its time, changed the planetary climate. The average temperature on the planet has dropped to negative 40 degrees Celsius. It is believed that then the entire planet was covered with a layer of ice and snow. This period is often referred to as Snowball Earth. Rodinia lasted approximately 350 million years, and 750 million years ago, it began its split into two parts. This provoked a warming climate, 
and a sharp jump in the evolution of life. The Cambrian period began in which life in the ocean was simply in full swing. But before the appearance of modern continents and their inhabitants, it was still very far away. We are grateful to the viewers who watched this video to the end. If you want to learn more about other eras in the life of our planet, we advise you to pay attention to the previous videos presented on our channel.